This is the GTN show. We have record breakers to discuss. We've got prize winners to announce and we have pain case to reveal. And on the subject of record breakers, we have the ultimate triathlon, but with a difference. And today we are going to be discussing whether Ironman is far enough. At the beginning of the summer, on the 1st of June, British man Ross Edgley set out with the attempt to swim around the UK mainland, a total of 1,780 miles. That is incredible. And in doing so, he aimed to not touch land once during the trip. So they stayed out at sea after every day of swimming. And at some point, he was swimming for 12 hours a day. They stay out at sea, carry on the next day. Yeah. And he did that for 157 days. Well, he completed this challenge on the Sunday just gone, and I mean, quite an incredible feat. We've been following it loosely, and at points I really didn't think he was gonna make it. He's had storms, he's had strong tides to, to um, battle against cold water, obviously, especially up around Scotland, and now we're in November, so it's not exactly tropical. And I think he aimed to do it in far quicker than, than he actually yeah, did. Yeah, I mean, I think he realized quite quickly just how tough it was. Very quickly, he started to suffer with chafing on the neck, um, so he had to figure out how to get around that. We had jellyfish stings yeah. that would were really putting him in a lot of pain. Also, his tongue just disintegrating oh, uh, through crazy. something called salt mouth. We did discuss it once before on the channel. And that was that was quite rough. So yeah. he's had a hard time, but wow, what an achievement! And yeah, as you say, came in on Sunday into Margate in Kenton. Lucy Charles yeah. greeted him as he came into the finish. So how, yeah, how cool is that? Definitely got a lot of traction in you know the triathlon community. And that leads us on. It's looking at how athletes, you know, triathletes as well, are often looking for another challenge. And it's not just swimming that we've um, seen record attempts at recently. Well, yeah, there's another chap actually close to home, actually a guy called Charlie Condor, having just finished A-levels at high school. So he decided, I want to do something different. So. He was trying to cycle around the world and actually just 100, 100 days into that challenge, he had his bike stolen, yeah. which is a little bit a little bit of a hinder. Yeah, hindering. well I think he'd already got through Europe and was somewhere in um, is it Asia or America? I think so, yeah. In, into Asia and he, um, well he's the youngest, he's attempted to be the youngest um, person to cycle around the world, but he was on a Sabello and they have amazingly, very kindly provided him with a new bike, which is a pretty cool story. Yeah, absolutely fabulous. I mean, he did say in an article that this was never going to stop him, he always was going to carry on, so yeah. really great that Sabello stepped in so he can carry on and continue for that 18,000 miles I think he's got to do, which is... Yeah. Something insane. Else. Well, whilst we're talking, you know, we've covered swimming, we've covered cycling, I think it's only fair that we have a look at running. And there is, admittedly, another British man, I'm sure there's lots of other people doing crazy run adventures, but Jamie McDonald is running 6,000 miles, almost 10,000 kilometres across America. And that actually equates to equivalent of 230 marathons, all in the aid of charity. Yeah, I mean, he actually has run across Canada before, and in doing so... <laughs> as you do. Yes, you do. And in doing so, he raised over half a million dollars for children's hospitals. And again, that is his, what his ambition is again, to raise money for children's hospitals, which is actually something close to his heart, having spent a lot of his childhood in these hospitals. So he's really trying to give something back. So that's a massive motivation for him. And that is really the ultimate triathlon ever. It um, is, and I mean, it's got us thinking, do we as triathletes actually look for other challenges? Is Ironman still far enough or do we want ultra endurance challenges? We do weirdly seem to attract uh, in triathlon people with that mindset, don't we? That yeah. just, we want to go further, we want to challenge ourselves more and maybe Ironman isn't enough for some of us. So yeah. that is the question today. Do you want to do further than Ironman? Is Ironman not enough? And it's simply, Yes or no? Yeah, and I must admit that I'm going for the towards the yes myself at the moment because I have just entered the Comrades Ultra Marathon. <sighs> I'm hoping it's going to be less time than it takes me to do an man, but it's now only... for those of you out there that don't know what a Comrades uh, Marathon is. How far is it? It's 87 kilometres of running. <laughs> yeah, and and it actually switches direction each year. So yeah. this year you are running uphill. There yeah. we go, so <laughs> don't like to do it easy yeah. here. But anyway, yeah, do make sure you click on the link above my head to enter that poll. And I think it's time to have a look at the results from last week's poll. Yeah, so I asked you, do you think the new Ironman qualification system is good? Um, where we're changing for the pro field, how they qualify for the Ironman 70.3 world champs and the Ironman world champs. 
and um, quite clear really this week. Yes, well it was a massive 72% of you that said yes and just 28% that said no. I don't know if you're surprised at that that answer there, Mark. I'm surprised it's so definite and clear, yeah. but I am excited actually to see how this is going to shake things up. I, I, I think a lot of people out there not, aren't really that yeah. sure how it's going to go. So We'll soon start to see. Yeah. Well, now we have the exciting giveaway time. So we've recently had um, giveaway competitions for the Utopia helmet from Cask, which I have here, nice. which is our new Aero Road helmet. And we also have the Roka Transition backpack. Yeah. Well, first up, we have three winners of this Utopia helmet. We have Gary Stevenson. We also have Damien Bergen and Jim Bretherton. Well, fantastic. Well done to you guys. And we will be in touch with you to get these helmets to you. Yeah. Now for the Roker transition bag, we have Chris Kutchin. Kane Boggis. And Lou Garcia. Well, again, congratulations to you guys. And just wait, we will be in touch. And then that Roker transition bag will be on its way to you. Well, this first bit of news is a little bit selfish because we have reason to celebrate. We've just reached another milestone, 150,000 subscribers, thanks to you guys. Yeah, it only feels like yesterday that we just surpassed that 100,000 subscribers. So yeah, another 50,000 is an amazing achievement for us. We're so happy and we're so pleased that you guys are enjoying the content and watching all our videos. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't get there without you, but that does mean we still wanna hear from you guys. So if there's things that you think, oh, you know, you really love about the show or videos we do, or if there's anything that you think I'd like more of that or something else that you've got an or idea. Or less of. <laughs> or less of us, yeah, hopefully <laughs> not. Um, do let us know in the comments section below. And next up in the news, we are going from talking about ultra distance triathlon to a three minute triathlon. USA Triathlon combined with Ironman have actually come up with this initiative at their um, some of their races to try and encourage runners, so specifically half marathon and marathon runners, to take up triathlon. And by doing so, they've got in their expos, they're basically setting up a three minute triathlon that's 60 seconds of swimming, or if they're using, I think, some sort of swim bench to replicate swimming, 60 seconds on a spin bike, followed by 60 seconds running on a treadmill. That's a great way of getting people into the sport, isn't it? And sampling it. Yeah, I mean, these events are half marathon marathons, and they're thinking that once someone's done a challenge like that, they're looking for another challenge, which you know we were talking about earlier. And they realize that lots of runners do cross train and they swim and cycle to kind of help with their training. So they think this is a great opportunity to try and get you know the sport of triathlon out there to other people. And not only do they get the chance to do this, they then get you know the right direction of where they can find their nearest triathlon club and free training support and a, and a training plan so it's a you know it's a great initiative and it actually is part of the bigger picture where USA Triathlon are trying to get from I think at the beginning of this year when it launched up until 20 the end of 2020 they want to try and get 100,000 new people into triathlon which is really very good isn't yeah, it yeah it's well we've also got some other news and this is that the LA Los Angeles triathlon is back after a three-year hiatus so that's great news it's an event that takes place on Venice Beach and this is going to have quite a big prize purse as well so yeah, it's going to attract it's, some international athletes yeah it's already the likes of Heather Jackson's already put a name to it it's not until June next year I think they had some problems with logistics for the last few years so it is actually a point to point triathlon so it's going to start like you said in Venice Beach but then the cycle is sort of an undulating route into downtown LA which sounds pretty cool and then the run is fairly flat and fast I think I would definitely like to be signing up for that one. I mean, anything that's got, you know, starts on Venice Beach and finishes in downtown LA, it's pretty cool. Now we also have some hot competition over at the Challenge races because this year, Challenge are running their Challenge Family World Bonus Pool with 165,000 US dollars up for grabs to the pro athletes. Yeah, well, it's suddenly got very exciting on the men's side because there is now a tie between Sebastian Keeney and Pablo De Pina. Now, it was Sebastian Keeney who had the lead quite comfortably for most of the season. He won Challenge Roth, so he got a lot of points there. But Pablo De Pina has crept up and it was his win at the Challenge for Guerra Mallorca, which has now put him on equal points with Sebastian Keeney. Yeah, and there is a race coming up very soon. It's the um, Asia Pacific Championships, which take place in Taiwan. So, with it being so close, it's going to be very interesting to see who comes out on top yeah. between them. So, very excited about all of this. Especially coming. late in the season as well. It's quite interesting to see how these athletes, you know, whether they put that as a priority. And obviously, we saw Keeney have disappointment in Kona, so he might have actually changed his focus to, you know, to look at this challenge championship. Now, there have been some rumours for some time now that SRAM have been working on a 12-speed group set for the road. 
and it appears that the rumors are true because just a couple of days ago, photos were spotted, leaked out onto the internet of bikes from the Katusha Alperson road cycling team. Yeah, well, it looks like it's, you know, they're trialing it ahead of the 2019 season and the fact that the pros are using it, it's obviously pretty much ready to go. So we're just waiting now to see this official launch, but it's quite exciting. And I think, you know, we're going to see more going in that direction. And I think triathlon will be pretty quick to grab yeah, that as well. Yeah, definitely. So, I, th I mean, it's not the first time we've seen these 12 speed group sets but as always with SRAM they like to hold on to things and make sure they're really perfect before they release them and while they're running it by the pro team to get rid of any teething issues and this was with a two by setup mm -hmm. but with triathlon yeah. with this whole one by setup becoming quite popular this could be really interesting giving you that gear range option yeah. um, but also on the same bike and the photos that were leaked they also spotted these new quark power meter cranks now i don't have much information on that but another very exciting yeah. product it's all a bit of a teaser we've been teased and we're teasing you Right, it's getting to that time of year where it's getting a little bit chilly and wet outside and some of us might be thinking about migrating our training indoors and yeah, I'm yet to do so, but after this weekend's ride, it was a little bit wet. I think it's about time I set up my turbo. But you guys are ahead of me on this event and you've sent in some of your pictures. So it's time to have a look at some pain caves. Yep, first one this week is from David and this is coming from Bellevue in Washington. And he has got his Cervelo P5 set up on his turbo trainer alongside his treadmill. But I mean, this is quite cool, isn't it? We've just spotted this arm that comes out mm -hmm. with a little stand so we can put his laptop I mean, on. That's ingenious. That's yeah, definitely huge space. It's got a lot of space as it is, and apparently the treadmill is a new addition. So. Is that a bottle cage on the wall? I think it is. That's very clever, actually. So you can have a bottle yeah, your laptop. just beside you whilst yeah. you're. Um, okay, next one from Earl, and this is from Texas. And he has got his Trek Speed concept set up on his turbo trainer alongside a Matrix Raphael. Oh. Now, um, I'm not fully aware of Matrix bikes, but that's, uh, that's cool. Pretty compact setup going on here with a lot of kit ready again. Se several helmets and a great few finisher like posters that are put together. And this is what intrigues us here. Mm. What is he watching? Yeah, so it looks like mountain biking. It's got Olympic Channel in the corner. But then there's a Mercedes sponsor, which I don't think sponsored the Olympics. I don't know. Well, oh, you're going to have to let us know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> let us know what you're watching there. Uh, next one is from Richard, and this comes from Portland in the UK. And he is, well, in the same boat as us, getting ready for the winter here. He's yeah. got his um, specialised shift set up on his turbo train, and then a specialised alley, is it? Or Roubaix up on yeah. the wall there. So. I expect the shift is going to be staying indoors for the time being. If I you're recommend wise. Yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. Well, then we've got um, one from running here in the autumn sunshine. And at this time of year, running is a little bit more enticing sometimes outdoors than cycling might be. And this is in from Jeremy. It's at Harger Park. And he says, not many cities can give a 12K loop around a leg, only a stone's throw from the city centre. When it's nice, it's easy to put all the trainers on, you can also swim in the lake. Well, yeah, I'm not lovely. sure where Harger Park is, Jeremy, but if you're swimming in the lake, you are brave. <laughs> <laughs> that is lovely. It almost looks like he's like freeze frame. Uh, yeah, like. I think he might have even staged that one of like, you know. Take a photo of me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we brilliant. like it. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, do please keep sending them in. As I mentioned before, we have got our new photo uploader. It's super easy. You just need to tick which box, whether it's a pain cave, yeah. it's a transition zone and send it in. Yeah, this time of year you might be just setting up or you've got a new pain cave or you've made it different. Do let us know because we'd love to see what you're going to be looking at for the next few months over winter. Well now time for the race news and this weekend we had the 36th running of the Noosa Triathlon over in Australia. In the women's race it was Ashley Gentle that added another big title to an already impressive 2018 season. In fact in doing so she's now made it her sixth title at the Noosa Triathlon. Now passing Emma Snowsill or not, now known as Emma Frodino with her five titles in the Noosa Triathlon and now that actually puts her matching and tying with triathlon legend Craig Walton with her six titles. But it wasn't easy for Gentle because she actually had a below par swim, so had to really come through hard on the run to pass the likes of Natalie Van Kerderen, who took second, and Radka Kardfeld, that took third. 
But over in the men's race, it was Aaron Royal that had a stellar race to take the win, but only just because he was being chased hard by fellow countryman Max Newman, who finished just two seconds behind him to take second. And in third, it was Ryan Bailey. In fact, it was only 14 seconds that separated the top three. Now, I also noticed a photo on social media from Luke McKenzie, previous Ironman World Championship silver medalist in 2013, who seemed to have a slight mishap on the bike, whereas Aero Bar popped out. So you've seen in the photos holding one of his aero bars in his right arm as he was resting on the other aero bar. So almost like a monopole, uh, monopole design. So yeah, that must have affected his race somewhat. So unfortunately, it probably wasn't the result he was after. Also this weekend, we had the Super League Triathlon and this time, over in Mallorca. On the Saturday, we had the triple mix format, which was essentially three triathlons, a very short distance. We had 300 meter swim, 4K bike, 2K run, but in different orders for each of those triathlons. So the first one was swim, bike, run, and then we had run, bike, swim, and then bike, swim, run. And each triathlon, just a 10 minute break between each. And then going into the Sunday, we had this sprint enduro format in which athletes had to qualify in the first round to get through to the second round. And the first round was two heats of which they split up the field completely randomly. And you had to come either top four within your heat or be the top two fastest finisher uh, overall between the two heats. So we had 10 of the fastest going through to the final. In the men's race, it was another dominant performance from Vincent Louis, making it three out of three for the Super League Triathlon Series. And then it was Henry Schumann that took second overall, and then Jonathan Brownlee taking third. Over in the women's race, however, Katie Safiris, who has been also very dominant at the Super League Triathlon Series, unfortunately suffered a crash on the second day, but was very happy still to make a podium finish, which still allowed her to gain enough points for the overall finish, but it was Taylor Spivey that took the overall win in Mallorca. Katie Safiris hanging on to second, and in third, it was Kirsten Casper. And then we had Ironman 70.3 at Los Cabos over in Mexico. And this race was absolutely dominated by Sam Appleton from Australia. So much so, after the swim and the bike, he had a seven minute advantage over his closest chaser, Joe Gambles. Now on the run, it was actually Mauricio Mendez that came flying through, but he actually came off the bike into T2 with around a nine minute deficit on Sam Appleton. And although he was chasing and closing on Sam Appleton, nine minutes was just far too much. So Sam Appleton took the win. It was Mauricio Mendez that took second and Joe Gambles took third. Over in the women's race, it was Ellie Salthouse and Carrie Lester that were almost inseparable throughout the whole swim and bike portion of the, the race, but it was actually Ellie Salthouse that pushed ahead to take the win. Carrie Lester took second and Heather Vertel took third. Well, that is all for the race news this week. And now over to Heather for question time down in the kitchen. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Well, to answer this first question, we're gonna get a little bit practical for a moment, hence why we've come down to the kitchen area. Because this question is in from Jonathan Zapala, and he's asking, and here's the pros in some of the videos, talking about putting gels into their bottles, but do they take it straight, or do they actually dilute them, and how does it get through the nozzle of the bottle? Uh, he said, a demonstration would be nice. Well, Jonathan, we are here to demonstrate. Right, well as you can see, to start with, it's taken forever to actually get the gel to come to the end of the nozzle to be able to drink from it. And once it's there, it's pretty sticky and pretty hard to get through, especially a bottle top like this. So I think we need to water it down. Well, I'm going to now add as much water as there is gel, so it's going to be a 50-50 consistency. Let's give it a little bit of a mix up. And already that's moving much more easily in the bottle, so let's try and have a drink. Well, Jonathan, to answer your question, yes, the pros do water down their gels, and you can see the reason why, but obviously gels do vary in consistency, so you need to work out what gel you're going to use and how dilute you want it. It is basically personal preference, so good luck with that, and let us know whether you water your gels down or whether you just keep them in the packets and have them separately. Well, now it is time for our caption competition, and last week's photo was Quite funny. It was, yeah. Uh, Richard Murray and Chris McCormack ahead of the Super League in Malta. 
Now we had some brilliant captions coming in. We thoroughly enjoyed I reading I know, you've been them. chuckling reading through them, Mark. Apparently. But we do have to be somewhat PC here, so <laughs> we'll have to avoid a few of those, but we have chosen some other very good ones. Yeah, first we've got the suggestion from Martin Kelly, desperate measures to avoid your mate from double dipping your chamois cream, rub it in for him. Mm, interesting. <laughs> um, from Cordar we had, I love this new Kona qualification system, so easy. But our winner of this week goes to Lord Burt. This is impressive, so, well, well done. You have come up with the caption. When you said, I had to work on my stroke, I didn't have this in mind. <laughs> it's awkward silence. Um, but it's you are the winner of the GTN <laughs> caption competition. Uh, please do get in touch and we will send this out to you. Uh, but swiftly moving on, um, we now have this photo of Martin Van Riel from the Super League in Mallorca this weekend wearing his dressing gown to the swim start. Yeah, I mean, maybe he just went for optimising transition out of bed to the start line as well as, you know, warming up for the event. Yeah, perhaps he did. Well, we'd love to hear your captions, so please do drop them in the comment section below. That's it for this week's GTN show. Again, a big thank you to all of you guys for helping us get to that 150,000 subscriber marker. And please do let us know any comments or suggestions that you have in that comment section below. And of course, keep sending in your photos. Yeah, and if you'd like to see our Should You Train When You're Ill video, because I am ill, as some of you did pick <laughs> up on last week from the show, um, then you can see that by just clicking down here. And if you're thinking about getting started for your pre-season, but want to know where you are in your training, then I've made a video on five pre-season fitness tests that you can take part in, and that video is just here.